right, starting, we are ready to go here. It'll be Brett Huffman, Levi Coghill, and Chase Almaguer due for Delphi here in the top of the first against Carson Pollock. Brett Huffman a so is a sophomore, and he will be pitching tonight, and he takes outside. Huffman is a 296 hitter. One RBI. Four of his eight hits have gone for extra bases. He's got three doubles and a triple. One and one. That ball's hit well. That's hit really well. Back to the wall, and that ball is gone. He hit it out. Wow, we do not see many balls fly out of here to right field, but Red Huffman just hammered one. Again, this Delphi team, they had two home runs in the season, both by Wandre, their catcher, but now that's number three, a lead off the game shot. And that'll bring up the freshman second baseman, Levi Coghill, hitting 375. Six for 16 on his young career. I think that pitch was up. Yeah. Fouled off. Got a chance to talk to Carson after the game, and the first thing I noticed talking to Carson, he is, he is built. <laughs> Swing and a miss. I think he was listed like 6'1 in the basketball program. He looked taller than that, actually. He looked like he was about 6'2 or 6'3. Like, and then I, I, I was just thinking, like, I, I'm asking him questions. I'm like, I'm saying to myself, I would not like to tackle this guy in a football game. 0-2 oh, to Coghill. Got him. So, Paul gives it the leadoff home run, but bounces back, and that'll bring up Chase Almaguer, their shortstop. He's a senior, and he is a stud, a 476 hitter, and he leads the team in hits with 10. Outside. He and Wandre are tied for the team, leading RBIs with eight. Eight RBIs already on April 15th. Swing and a miss. Chase Almaguer, a very, very good basketball player for Coach Colley and his team, scored his 1,000th point mm -hmm. this past year. Good pitch. Looks like a breaking ball over the outside corner, one and two. Of course, I don't know if you saw that or not, but uh, Coach Colley has uh, resigned from Delphi. Oh, okay. I saw that on the John Harrell website where he has the uh, – Coaching changes list, and uh, Coach uh, Colley was one of them that uh, was listed as being a change on the boys' side. Almaguer goes down swinging, and that will bring up the senior third baseman, Jackson Hickson. And that is a base hit in the left field. So Hickson hits the second hit of the inning. And now that'll bring up the slugging junior catcher, Hunter Wandre. He was hitting 400 on the year, 8 for 20. Eight hits and eight RBIs, and three of his eight hits have gone for extra bases. He's got a double and two homers. Strike. You know, this Delphi-Rochester baseball rivalry has really grown over the last four or five years uh, into a, a pretty good rivalry. Both teams. That's a base hit down the third baseline. We'll take, uh, taking the turn and holding is Hickson. That's a single for Wandre. Both these teams' programs have uh, really been very competitive in that 2A level. Yeah. Obviously, we saw that regional matchup there at uh, Lafayette Central Catholic a few years ago that Delphi ended up getting the win after Rochester had won the regular season matchup. I think Rochester's kind of, they've grown up to meet Delphi's level. Mm -hmm. um, 
Delphi is there every year since Coach Long has been there. And I think you could argue that they were a pretty good program even before then. You know, um, it wasn't like a total rebuilding project for Coach Long, but he just kind of took it took what was already pretty good into another level. Good breaking ball there. Own one to Landon Pickering. Pickering is a 300 hitter, three for ten, three RBIs. Uh, courtesy runner for the catcher. Didn't see the number. They're wearing these black jerseys with black numbers and just that gold outline <laughs> that everybody thinks is really cool, but really isn't. Yeah, maybe two feet away from you, it's, it looks pretty cool, but when you're trying to pick those up from the press box, it's a, it's a little tougher. Not as big of a thing as it is when we're doing that for uh, football, but. 0-1. Hi. I thought they changed that rule to the disallow that kind of uh, you have to have more of a contrast. Well, maybe, maybe that was just yeah. in the football. Yeah, it's definitely true in football. Strike two. I think Rochester was just as guilty of that, what, like two or three years ago when they went up to Whitco with those uh, traveling uniforms they had at the time that almost impossible to, to read the numbers. Yeah. Pickering just almost chopped at that ball like an ax and was able to follow it off and stay alive. Count still at two and two. Low ball three. This is a big pitch here, 3-2 with two on and two out for uh, both the batter and for Carson Pollock. Fouled off. Again, the defensive lineman for Rochester. Fervid on left. Casper in center. Brandt back in right. Reinert's a third. Brady Coleman playing short tonight. Gavin Young playing second tonight. Brady back at first. Cypher catching Pollock. And the pitch is outside for base on balls. Good at bat for Pickering, and the bases are loaded. Yeah, Pickering did a really nice job. He battled off a couple of pitches and was able to stay alive and, and draws the walk now with the bases are loaded with two outs here. So, Kaysen Yount is the batter. Yount is a senior, two for three on the season. So, gotten off to a good start and 0 and 1 the count. Yount is a senior. And he is their right fielder tonight. Ball one. Just seems like release points a little bit inconsistent for Pollock. I mean, either he's hitting his spot perfectly or he's just he's missing. Again, that's kind of that's what high school pitching is about sometimes, being able to repeat that delivery. But, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if they could repeat that delivery – Right. They <laughs> the ones that can are the ones that, yeah. Right, and we're also talking about a 15-year-old. And the ones that can are, you know. A foul ball, and the count is two and two. So another 2-2 two -two count here for uh, Pollock with two outs. Delphi threatening with the bases loaded, but if Pollock can get this one out. Foul off. Another 2 2. All right. You know, it's interesting just to watch Jake Cypher. You should really just take, a, take an inning and just watch Jake. And just the little things he does to try to help out his pitcher. Fall off again. The runners, all three runners, were on the move. On a three-two count with two outs. You know the the Delphi hitters are really able to foul off, keep alive. Got him swinging a breaking ball. I look like he took a little off. Nice pitch. That retires the side. 
For Delphi on the top of the first, one run, three hits, no errors, three left. End of half an inning. Delphi leads Rochester one to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV4. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland Field, moving into the bottom of the first. Delphi had a leadoff home run, Val. They had the bases loaded with two outs. A full count, Carson Pollock able to get that strikeout and get out of that inning, but Delphi did a nice job of uh, getting some runners in scoring position there. We see in whatever sport he plays that Carson Pollock is kind of a calm, cool, collected customer. And, you know, a lot of times you get a 15-year-old pitcher in there. It's, you know, the adrenaline's flowing, and they, they feel like they want to throw the ball 100 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit off there. It takes a little bit off his breaking ball and um, just messed up his timing just a little bit to get the swing and the miss. Yeah. That's Carson Pollock in a nutshell. Yeah. And you talk about, obviously, you know, from the quarterback position to the pitching position, you got to have a short memory. You know, you were 3-2 the batter before and you walked him so you know then the now the pressure is even higher because there's no room and the bat the bases were loaded so really nice job there by Pollock to to get that strike out and kind of stem the tie there the one run on that home run is all that uh, Delphi got in the first inning so Zebra seeing a left-handed arm tonight and Brett Huffman who has a no no, no record and a 6.63 ERA Coleman, Pollock, and Reinert's due here in the bottom of the first, and the count is 1-0 on Brady Coleman. Fly ball, center field. Going back on it and making the catch is Keegan Watts for the first out. That will bring up Carson Pollock, and Car Carson had one of those big hits in the seventh inning of Caston the other day, hitting 310 on the year. 11 for 35. He's got seven RBIs. Reinerts and Cypher have nine RBIs each. They're tied for the team lead. And Gavin Young has eight. So pretty balanced uh, production. Talking about balanced scoring in basketball. Pretty balanced production. Rochester, that's a pop-up for a space side. Was that dropped? Yeah. It was dropped? Yeah. I don't know if uh, Pickering just. Yeah, I don't know the you know the, the runner coming down the baseline. I don't know if he just kind of took his eye off of it for a second or what. But uh, yeah, it looked like a yeah. can of corn there and not able to get that catch. He didn't lose it in the sun, I don't think. No, the sun's behind him. And he's wearing sunglasses. Yeah. So Tanner Reinerts will bat now with somebody on base. Now. What's always interesting in high school baseball, not only you don't see a ton of left-handed pitchers, but part of it is when you don't, because you don't see a lot of left-handed pitchers, it's kind of hard to gauge their pickoff move. Mm-hmm. Reinert's a 400 hitter. Fouled off. He's got, he's 10 for 25, and five of his 10 hits are for extra bases. He's got three doubles and two homers. One you know, with the three. with the power that you have up at the base, I don't know how aggressive are you going to be on the bases right now. If uh, you know Reinerts, I think you want to kind of give him an opportunity to maybe move the yeah. the base runners by uh, using his bat. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, I, you know, how many times did we see Ethan Medina pick somebody off during his career because guys just couldn't kind of judge his move. Mm -hmm. Two and one. Delphi split a doubleheader with Kautz on Saturday. And we mentioned Rochester with that 10 to 6 win over Caston. Delphi won the first game over Kautz 5 to 2, lost the second game 7 to 2. And if you look at their four losses, they've just pitching has struggled in those games. Delphi with a home game against Benton Central tomorrow and another home game against Tri Central on Wednesday. Three and one to Reinerts. Base on balls. First and second with one out. Now Jake Cypher steps up. Jake is hitting 292 on the year. 
One homer and nine RBIs. Looks like he tries off speed on the first pitch and misses low. And should be a hole on that right side with the base runner being held on. Popped up foul. Can Pickering get there? Nope. Foul ball. Fly ball, right field. Dropped. That ball is dropped. Throw to second. Safe. That ball just hung up in the air for a while. And Casey out. Couldn't come down with it. E9. So a couple Delphi errors here have uh, left the bases loaded now for Gavin Young. Gavin hitting 280 on the year. He has seven hits and 25 at bats. Two of his seven hits have gone for extra bases, and we saw one of them. That home run against Culver Academy on Friday that put the Zebras ahead for good. Two-run shot. It was interesting what he said about that. He said the hit and run was on. Caleb Lutz was going on the play. He said, "He said I wouldn't have swung at the pitch otherwise, but the hit and run sign was on. I had to hit. I had to swing at it." Good dig by Wandre on that pitch in the dirt, one and zero. Rochester is hitting three oh one as a team. Ball. Having said that, if I'm a cast fan, I'm pretty, pre feeling pretty good about Noah Hurd as your number three pitcher. Mm -hmm. um, Zider, Zider Duvall, Hurd, that's pretty good. And let's try call. And Coach Molenkoff said, I took Noah out because we might need him for those conference games on Monday or Tuesday, yeah. just in case for a couple innings. I, I didn't take him out because he wasn't pitching well. Throw to Ooh. first. Picked him off. Yeah. You talk about that move. Was so that, that changes things. Was that Lutz in there? Is it? Now second and third with two outs. Now the runner at first on a bases loaded situation gets picked off. Strike two. Pitch from Huffman. Outside. Whenever we said pitch from Huffman the last three or four years, we were talking about the Zebras. Right. We were talking about the opponent. Hmm. Now a, uh, a really big pitch here for Delphi. Throw back to second. Safe. Coghill trying to sneak in behind Reinerts. Boy, that's kind of risky. You turn around and you throw that, and you throw that just off the a little bit, and next thing you know, you got a run coming in. Fly ball to right. That is gonna down. land down the line. Fair should be extra bases, and this is gonna score two. Gavin Young comes through in the clutch with a two-run double. Another big bat up here for Rochester with Ferv. Yeah, he got on base four times in the casting game. He had a hit and three walks. First pitch is outside. 1-0. and oh. Ferv, a 3.33 hitter on the year. Pop foul. 
Pickering chasing, but he can't get it, and the count is one and one. For uh, six for 18 on the year, and three of his six hits have gone for extra bases. He's got two doubles and a homer. Rochester doesn't have a triple as a team, but they do have 15 doubles. One and one. Strike. Over at Fansler, Eastern leads 3-0 in the bottom of the first. The Zebras are up to bat, no outs. Swing and a miss, and did he catch that? He did, and that strikes, that uh, retires the side. So Huffman strikes up Faverda for his first K. But Rochester scores two in the bottom of the first. One hit, two errors, one left. At the end of one inning, Rochester 2, Delphi 1, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Back here, Bob Copeland Field moving into the second with the Rochester Zebras leading 2-1 off of the big double by Gavin Young. Strike called against Keegan Elliott to start off the second inning for Pollock. Make it 0-2. Elliott will be followed by Keegan Watts and Brett Huffman, 8-9-1. and one. Due for Delphi. Tippecanoe Valley softball, 1-2. and two. Uh, We'll get an update shortly. Got him. Good pitch. Four outs for Pollock, all of them on strikeouts. Lady Z is not able to put any runs across in the first trail, 3 nothing after one over at Fansler to the Eastern Comets. And two, Tippecanoe Valley softball leads Culver 12 to 1, bottom of the fourth. Community or Academy? Community. Community. 0 and 2. Fly ball to right. Brand Beck makes the catch. Two down. Yeah, Corey Good talked about Brandt in the outfield and said that ball that dropped in front of him in the CMA game last week, that's going to be an out. That'll give him a couple weeks, and that's going to be an out. It's just a matter of experience. Brett Huffman is the batter. He let off the game with a homer last inning. Ball one. Ball two. Baseball, Winnemac leads Pioneer 4-2, to two, bottom of the third. It's at Pioneer. Two and one. Ball three. Baseball, Triton leads Caston one to nothing bottom of the first. Hmm. It is over at Caston tonight, so they're playing softball and baseball at home tonight. 3-1. Good pitch. Look, it took a little off that. Maybe it was a, it was like a slider. 3-2. Hmm. Got him. Yeah. Called strike three. Strike at number five. For Delphi in the top of the second. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of an inning and a half. It's Rochester two and Delphi one. And you're watching RTC TV four. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland Field. Beautiful afternoon here in Rochester. And Carson Pollock, another uh, great inning there. Three strikeouts in the Top of the second, the Rochester Zebras lead two to one here after an inning and a half. Getting more of a rhythm, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I think getting that, I, in a lot of ways, I think he kind of fed off getting that strikeout of Yant with the bases loaded to mm -hmm. get out of the first inning and kind of got some momentum off that. So, 
you, again, you're just not going to face him very much. Softball update. Caston scores six in the bottom of the first, and they lead North White 6 nothing. now bottom of the second. Of course, mm -hmm. those two teams are sectional rivals. The uh, next IHSA Executive Committee coming up here later this month shouldn't be too far away, right? Two weeks from today, April 29th. Okay. Yep. Might be finding out some, maybe, sexual, sectional, yeah. sectional pairings. It's usually that last, either the last Monday in April or the first Monday in May, whenever, at, at, right after that Executive meeting, Committee meeting that they have. So it'll be either April 29th or April 30th, but I'm guessing 29th. First pitch is in there for a strike to Brand Beck. Of course, the... Softball and baseball draws are both Sunday, April 28th. Yeah. Less than two weeks away. That's <laughs> crazy how quickly they. Mm -hmm. Swing and a miss. Brant hitting 238. He is the sophomore right fielder. Four RBIs for Brant. God, I'm looking with the breaking ball. Strike at number two for Huffman. And that will bring it Brady back. Brady hitting 316, now 6 4 19 on the season. I mean, this is really just how he's doing this is just amazing. I mean, this is <laughs> ground ball to second base. Uh, now, this is not the sports writer jinx. This is, or the announcer jinx. This is just a compliment to uh, a man of good intention. Brady back. I was talking. I was going to make pay him a further compliment, but he just swung at the first pitch, and now he's not at bat anymore. So I'll save it for later. Parker Casper's up there, and he takes a strike. He is hitting 318 on the year, seven for 22. He's got six singles and a double. Outside. Strike call. Two and two. Outside. In the Delphi defense, Hartley in left, Watts in center, Yount in right. Hicks in at third. Base on balls. Hicks in at third, Almaguer at short, Coghill at second, Pickering at first, and Wandre is the catcher, Huffman the pitcher. And now Brady Coleman will get to hit here. Brady flew out to center his first time up. Again, does Coach Good have anything in mind here? I should mention that Coach uh, Himes has been the third base coach. Throw back, safe. <laughs> After that pickoff the last inning, everybody yells, get back. The leads, the leads at first have uh, kind of shrunk a little bit as well. Yeah. And I think, is Brian Holcomb, is he kind of helping it? Is he kind of the pitching coach? I know. They don't have kind of designated pitching and hitting coaches, but I know Brian Holcomb was the one who went out to the mound the other day. 0-1. And, and they got him on the move as Casper threat on the second. Out to retire the side. That's a caught stealing. 1-3-6, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of two innings. Rochester 2 and Delphi 1, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Back here, Bob Copeland Field moving into the third inning here after two full innings of action. Rochester leads Delphi 2-1. to one. And uh, both teams kind of locked down on that defensive side there in that second inning, Val. Yeah, I think both pitchers got into a little bit of a rhythm there. And again, Rochester getting, you know, Huffman's recorded six outs so far, and two of the six have been on the bases, one on a pickoff and one on a 
caught stealing. So being able to read that move of Huffman is going to be not only the key in tonight's game, but kind of the key moving forward this season in terms of if you want to be as aggressive on the bases as you want. Coghill, Almaguer, and Hickson. So this is the heart of the order due up. Okay, let's play Immaculate Grid. The first category, 30 stolen bases in a season and 100 RBIs in a season. What was the most popular answer on Immaculate Grid? Ball right. two. Say that one more time. 30 stolen bases in a season, 100 or more RBIs in a season. It doesn't have to be in the same season. It could be two separate seasons. Oh, geez. And remember, it skews. Remember, this skews modern. So a guy who's done it recently might might be a higher score than a guy who hasn't done it. I did it 50 years ago or whatever. Two and one. Excuse me. Wait, three and one? No. Yeah. It's based on balls. Cockhill's on. Ricky Henderson. McGuire. Sosa. Okay, I said Sosa, and I was right. Uh, that, was, that was the most popular answer. Was it McGuire? Number one answer was Ronald Acuna Jr., hmm. the superstar for the Atlanta Braves. Ronald Acuna Jr. In the dirt, knocked down by Cypher, and he chases after it, and Coghill will have to stay. 30 stolen bases in a season by a St. Louis Cardinal. Can you think of a St. Louis Cardinal? What's the number one answer? Did Ozzie do it? That's right. Ozzie Smith is the number one answer. I thought it would be Lou Brock or Vince Coleman, mm. but it was Ozzie Smith. Okay. 30, bo 30 stolen bases in a season. Played first base minimum one game. On ball. Passed Young and in a right field. That's a base hit. Brent Beck throws it in to Coleman. A base hit for Almaguer. He's one for two. Well, that's a good one because first baseman generally not no known for, for stealing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. And I, I was wrong on that. My guess was wrong. So 30 stolen bases in a season by a first baseman. Gosh. Or at least a guy who played a minimum of one game at third base. Or well, that's first, probably first the – First base, excuse me, first base. That's probably the thing, somebody that just played first base one game or something. Because I don't think it's going right. to be a full-time first baseman. <laughs> oh. But and also back in the '80s, there were just a lot more stolen bases in the 19. Growing that, that's the baseball I grew up on. Guys were just running all the time, and guys just don't run that way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to my old standby, Mark Grace. I doubt he ever did it, but <laughs> no, he never had. Did he ever have? Did he ever have a stolen base? Not, not 30. Yeah, maybe a 30 in his career. Hickson goes down swinging. That that's a that's a I don't have a clue on that one. Correct answer, Jeff Bagwell. Hmm. Former Houston Astro first mm -hmm. baseman was a National League MVP in 1994. For he was kind of a big stocky guy, but he can move a little bit, and he yeah, he's hmm. the number one answer. Hmm. Strikeout number six for Pollock, and that'll bring up Hunter Wandre, who singled his first time, first pitch breaking ball outside. Two thousand or more career hits, plus a 100 RBIs or more in a season. Did you? I think you said the answer. Who said that? Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter was the number one answer. Fly ball, left center. Did he catch that? Yes, he did. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, what a catch by Ferv. Is he okay, man? I I thought uh, I thought there was going to be a collision out there. Honestly, I I didn't know how a how he caught that and b how there wasn't just a massive collision out there. And then he got up and he threw the ball into the infield quickly, and the runners had to hold. <laughs> And how far did he run to get that? 50 yards? I mean, yeah. he had a ways to go. Yeah. Okay, that'll bring up the first baseman, Landon Pickering, who walked his first time up at a real 
Solid at bat, really competed. Yeah, Derek Jeter was the number one for 2,000 career hits plus 100 RBIs in the season. How about 2,000 career hits and played for the St. Louis Cardinals? 0-2, nice breaking ball. What's the number one answer? 2,000 career hits or more and played for the St. Louis Cardinals. Could be any time in his career, played one day for the St. Louis Cardinals. Got him. Strikeout number seven. For Delphi, no runs, one hit. No errors, two left. End of two and a half. It's Rochester two and Delphi one, and you're watching RTC TV four. Welcome back here. Moving into the bottom of the third, I guess if you were going to put the, a capsule in that uh, top of the third there, Val, that catch by Ferv out in left center, I mean, that uh, that probably saved a couple of runs for the Rochester Zebras in that uh, top of the third. Right. I mean, the way I mean, it kind of hung in the air for a little while, but at the same time, it wasn't like it was just a can of corn at all. Mm -hmm. He really had to run a long way, just a great athletic play by Ferv. Never said that before, have we? <laughs> Ferv. Yeah, he's uh, he's a special athlete, that's yeah. for sure. This is a big – here's a big opportunity for the Zebras. you got the top of the order due up here in the top of the – in the bottom of the third. And you got seven, eight, nine in the Delphi order due up in the top of the fourth. Mm -hmm. So here's a chance, I think, maybe to add to the lead a little bit here. Add to the lead and possibly keep them at one. Yeah. Grounder left side. Hicks Trouble. In, boots it. E5. Third error of the game for uh, Delphi, and they've, you know, errors are generally costly, but they've been uh, pretty costly. Especially costly mm -hmm. for Delphi, yeah. 2,000 or more career hits and played for the St. Louis Cardinals. We heard Albert Pujols, but the correct answer is Stan Musial. Mm. Chris Stan, an all-time legend of it. And that one gets away. That was a wild pitch. He might go for two there. That's uh, way back there. Yeah. Nope, just going to. With Pollock up, don't want to risk it. Renner at second with nobody out, and Pollock's ahead in the count. 2,000 or more career hits and played, played first base minimum one game. What's the most popular answer on Immaculate Grid? 1-0, 1-0 pitch. Outside. Mark Grace. Well, that's the correct answer, um, but it's not the most popular answer. Okay. I like I liked Mark Grace. I'm sorry. And that one gets away. Another wild pitch. Uh, this guy is famous for his consecutive game streak, and he is famous for, sadly, the disease that took his life. Lou Gehrig? Lou Gehrig. Mm. Yep. 100 or, or M MVP and 100 or more RBIs in a season. Strike call, 3-1 and one to Pollock. I guess you didn't have to have the 100 RBIs in the season you won MVP, but if you won the MVP, you probably had 100 RBIs. What's the most popular answer? Put in play to second base. This is going to bring home the run. Coghill to Pickering for the out. Coleman scores on the play. And it is now three to one. Pools? No. Good guess. That would have been a correct answer, but that's not the most popular answer. Nobody on one out for Tanner Reinerts. Breaking ball in there. Tanner walked and scored his first time. Sammy? been a correct answer, but it's not the most popular answer. Think Yankees. Think recent Yankee. Think current Yankee. Ooh, that ball socked to center. But it is caught for the second out. Is he like 6'8"? Watts with the catch. Yep. Yep. Judge. Aaron Judge, yes, that's correct. Ball one to Cypher. That pitch was in the dirt. MVP, St. Louis Cardinal. Guy who won an MVP as a member of the Cardinals. What's the most popular answer on Immaculate Grid? 
Well, Stan seems to be getting the uh, other votes. Is it, was it Musial? Musial? Nope, this is Albert Pujols. That was Pujols? Mm -hmm. In the dirt, two and one. Last one, MVP played first base minimum one game. And it doesn't have to be, they didn't have to win the MVP that when they played first base. Or it didn't have to be their primary position, just a minimum one game. Pop-up foul. Did Frank ever know. get so, an MVP? Uh, so I'll, 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 Frank Thomas? Yeah. Yeah, that would have been a correct answer. It's not the most popular answer. Like Johnny Bench played first base and he played MVP, but and he won an MVP. He won mm -hmm. two MVPs, but most notably, that would have been a correct answer. Yeah. But that's not the most popular answer. But that obviously you think of him as a catcher, right? Two and two. Most popular. Think think current first. think current Los Angeles Dodger. First baseman. That's correct. In the dirt. Nope. Foul ball. Foul ball says the umpire. Kind of hangs at two and two. Freddie Freeman. Hmm. Most popular answer. Now, here is what I put. And, again, I didn't handle the pressure very well. I wanted to impress people. <laughs> 30 stolen bases and 100 RBIs in a season. I put Sammy Sosa. 1%. So, 30 stolen bases in a season. St. Louis Cardinals, I missed that one. I got an X. Hmm. I guess Kurt Ford, but that was, no. He never came close. I just remember him being one of those fast Cardinals of the 80s. Got him swing. No, you're going to have to complete the out at first? What's going on here? Pickering's going to step on the bag anyway. <laughs> or he's not. He's not. Everybody's going He on. is or he isn't. Inning is over. I say strike out number three. So Rochester gets one run on no hits, one error, and nobody left on base. End of three innings. Rochester three, Delphi one, and you're watching RTC TV four. Welcome back here. Moving into the fourth after three innings, Val Delphi out hitting Rochester four to one, but Rochester leading the game three to one. It's been a case of defense. I mean, that's been the whole game so far. All three runs that Huffman has allowed have been unearned. Yeah, three errors through three innings for Delphi. And meanwhile, you know, Carson Paul got on, not the one you want to get off to a not the start you want to get off to when you give up a home run of the first batter of the game, and he's really uh, settled down and just gotten out of. Whatever jams he's gotten into, I mean, last inning, first and second, nobody out, and they do not score. Over at Fansler, moving into the bottom of the third, Eastern Comets leading Rochester 7-1 in softball action. Okay, so I said Kurt Ford for the Cardinals and 30 stolen bases. That was an X. He never got there. 30 stolen bases and played first base. I guess David Wright. I, I, I knew he had stolen 30 bases in the season. We never played a game at first base. Hmm. So I'm probably one who – that was just – yeah, I, I, nothing came right to mind, so I guess David Wright. But he never he was a very famous third baseman for the Mets, but never played first base. 2,000 or more hits, 100 or more RBIs in a season. I guess Billy Williams. That was a correct answer, point three. Fly ball to center. Casper makes the catch. Hasten Yount makes the first out here in the top of the fourth. will be followed by Keegan Elliott and Keegan Watts. Elliott is the DH. He's a sophomore, and he struck out his first time up. 2,000 or more hits in a Cardinal, Frankie Frisch, Hall of Fame second baseman. 2,000 or more, that was point six. 2,000 or more hits played first base. This was a Cub first baseman in the early 80s, and one of my first favorite players, Bill Buckner, mm -hmm. point seven. 100 or more RBIs in a season and won an MVP. I got this one, Ryan Sandberg, point four. Though he didn't, the year he won the MVP was not the year he had 100 RBIs. 2-0. How's he doing, by the way? Uh, he said he's doing better. Uh, he said he's he's doing his chemotherapy. He said, um, yeah, he didn't get real sweet in Instagram, or he said he's feeling better, but he didn't get too specific. So just praying for him. Yeah. Man, I mean, he's just a big part of my childhood in a way. And, and I speak probably for a lot of Cubs fans my age. Pop up. Caught by Brady Beck. Elliott pops to first for the second out of the inning. Nice play there by Beck. Moving over and getting that second out of the inning. Car St. Louis Cardinal and MVP. I went with Marty Marion. He was the 1944 National League MVP. Shortstop. The Cardinals. Point seven. There's That's the nerd in me. Hmm. And MVP played first base minimum of one game. This is a guy who won two MVPs, but he is not really known. He's more known as a center fielder. But he did play some first base early in his career. 
Dale Murphy. Hmm. Point four. I know a lot of people, he's not in the Hall of Fame. A lot of people think he should be. He was a heck of a player. 2-0 and oh to Keegan Watts, who flew out to right field his first time up. 2-1. and one. So that was my that was my grid today. But again, I missed the two. Just a little off the plate. Zebras host Southwood in the conference opener on Wednesday. They host Pioneer on Thursday. And host Northfield next Monday. Inside corner, strike two, full count. Again, Zebras' first five conference games are at home. Three and two. Just off the corner, Watts keeps the inning alive, and now Huffman will get to bat with a man on base. So, plan is to uh, have this game on with no commentary for Southwood baseball on Wednesday. Val, you and I will be over at Fansler for the softball team. Then we'll be back over here on Thursday night for the game with Pioneer and Rochester. Round ball to second. Gavin Young has it, and he throws to Brady Beck for the out, and that retires the side. So Pollock walks the nine hitter, then gets Huffman. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. End of three and a half. It's Rochester three and Delphi one, and you're watching RTC TV four. All right, moving into the bottom of the fourth here at Rochester. The Zebras lead 3-1 over the Delphi Oracles. Big non-conference game here. Uh, not sectional rivals anymore, but uh, potential uh, regional rivals, I guess, uh, with Delphi and Rochester. They've had some uh, good battles over the last few years. Right now, the Zebras leading 3-1. to one. The big uh, story with uh, Delphi is, uh, you know, the three errors, Val. They've, they've only given up one Rochester hit, but uh, three big errors have led to uh, uh, three runs for the Rochester Zebras. And uncharacteristic, and that's just not something you would expect. How many sectional titles has Delphi won in baseball, Steve? Ooh. Ten. One second here. Correct answer is eight. Yeah, not too far off. And they won three in a row. First pitch is fouled off by Gavin Young. Rochester has one hit in this game, and Gavin's got it. Yeah, Two it was run a double big, back in the first inning. Yeah, big one for him. It's funny, I, I wrote in that article and I quoted Gavin as saying I'm kind of be I'm going to be a one inning guy in the mound, and I put that quote in my article and the coaches read that and they were like, uh, Gavin, we got some news for you, mm. <laughs> and he pitched three innings against Caston, and he pitched well. I mean he he got stronger as the game went on. Of course, had Rochester beaten Bremen in that sectional final last year, these two teams would have played each other in the regional. Mm -hmm. Delphi wound up beating Bremen 10-2 in the regional at Lafayette Jeff. Well, I, I was really impressed with uh, with Gavin on Friday night uh, coming in after the lightning delay. Really did a nice job. He was kind of looking a little shaky there before the yeah. lightning delay, but I don't know what happened there in that lightning delay, but he came back, and I think it took, what, six minutes to finish the game off? Yeah. Get those last three outs. Said he had some cookies and felt better. <laughs> Boy, I need some of those cookies. Those must yeah. have been some uh, really good cookies. Colton Furbit on the batter. Colton struck out his first time. Oh, nice pick by 
Wandre. Yeah, saved a base there for sure. He Fervita struck out swinging his first time. That is a wild pitch. And we'll take a big turn and hold on at second. Start of the fourth inning over at Fansler on RTC4.com. The Eastern Comets lead 7-1 over the Rochester Zebras in softball action. Let's see how that affects Ferv's approach here. Obviously, at the very least, you want to move the runner over, but again, Ferv's a slugger as well. I... Two and two, if they could chase what would have been ball three. Yeah, I don't know if that had some late movement on it or what, but uh, it was clearly uh, a little outside. To left and deep. It'll drop for a base hit. It'll go over the left fielder's head. Rounding third and coming on in to score. The throws to second. Safe. Young scores from second and an RBI double by Colton Fervita. So, so much for moving the runner, hitting to the right side and moving the runner along. Well, he, he, he moved the runner along. Yeah, he <laughs> clobbered that ball. Four to one, Rochester. It'll bring up Brant back. Let's see if a bunt might be in order here. Or you just, at very least, again, you want to move the runner over. Fly ball, left center field, that might drop. It does for a base hit and holding on a second is Ferbida. Yeah, nothing he could do because he was holding in case that was caught, but uh, leaves the Zebras with uh, runners at first and second now with uh, a pair of back-to-back -back hits and they have a little conference here on the mound. And this has a uh, take out the pitcher. Uh, a little bit of a pitching of change feel to it. Yeah, maybe not. Coach Long, uh, outstanding. I mean, outstanding is an understatement, Coach. I mean, took Frontier. They were in the – was he was the coach there. I mean, they were in the top five every year in 1A. They dominated that old Midwest conference. I'm going to leave him in here. Okay, they're going to leave him in. Yep. Big spot here for Brady with nobody out and runners at first and second. Outside. Yeah, you know, we were talking about his work ethic, but Corey Good also raved about Brady's hand-eye coordination. Says mm -hmm. it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. And says it really allows him to get to pitches that you wouldn't think he'd be able to get to, but he's just... Again, yeah, all the respect in the world to Brady Beck for uh, picking this up and doing as well he's, as he had after not playing since basically, what, 12U? Yeah. Oh, he reaches out. Is that caught? It is yes. caught. Back to second and the throw back to first. Not in time. And is that a wild throw? Well, that was crazy. Brady Beck kept running down the line. He actually collided with the first baseman, and that's going to be an error. And Brand Beck advances second on the play. I don't know if Brady realized that that was caught. Uh, he wouldn't have kept running like that yeah. if he did. And they're going to call that uh, interference, I believe. So is that a triple play? It is a triple play. What a weird play. A line drive back to the pitcher turns into a triple play. All right, back here in the top of the fifth. That's uh, 
got to be one of the strangest plays I think I've seen in a long time. Val there with uh, no nobody out. Beck hits the uh, comebacker to uh, the pitcher. He throws the second for the second out. Throw over to third. And she they're going to first. Yeah, throw over to first, and they're going to call an interference and uh, out number three. So just like that, you go from two on, nobody out, to we're going to the top of the fifth. And Coghill flies out to left field with uh, Fur strolling over and making the catch. Pollock has retired seven of the last eight batters he's faced, but now here's a really good one in Chase Almager. Line drive to right, caught by Brant Beck. Two up, two down. Brant Beck's been playing a really good right field for uh, Rochester as well. Yeah, and I mean, that's a position that Rochester had really had covered the past couple of years. Gavin Young played out there a lot. That Landon Bumford mm -hmm. was a guy who played a lot of right field and played a good right field. Medina uh, could play out there. So outfield defense has really been a strength of the Zebras for a while. But again, mm -hmm. some new guys out there this year. Is that a foul ball? No. I don't think that hit the bat. Well, it didn't hit him because he's not going to first base. So what do we got? Hickson has singled and struck out. Outside, I believe the count is one and one. No, it's 2-0. Oh. Okay. Fouled off, 2-1. and one. Outside, ball three. Base on balls. Now you get a power thread and Wandre up. He has singled and he flew out to left field. That was the play that Fervita made that great catch on. Lady Z is still trailing by six runs over at Fansler to the Eastern Comets as they move into the bottom of the fourth. Seven to one is the score. Yep. Delphi made it all the way. To, they got one within one win of Victory Field last year. Round ball to third. Reinerts to first for the out, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. At the end of four and a half innings, Rochester leads Delphi four to one. You're watching RTC TV4. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland Field, moving into the bottom of the fifth. Val, I tell you what, this is the weather we've been waiting on all spring long. I mean, it is yeah. a beautiful night here yeah, in Rochester. Yeah, really nice. It's uh, <laughs> It was wonderful yesterday. I was like, man, we should have a game somehow. Mm -hmm. Can't waste it. <laughs> Don't want to waste a day. Uh, without sports and an 80 and sunny, 80 degree day and sunny like it was yesterday. Yeah, so yeah, beautiful day. Nine one two in the Rochester order here in the top of the fifth. Casper Coleman and Pollock. As I mentioned, Bremen or Delphi got within one win of Victory Field last year. They beat Bremen in the regional. They beat Winchester in the semi-state semifinal. Then they lost to Ileana Christian 12 to one in the semi-state final. And of course, Ileana Christian went on and won the state championship for the second straight year. Yeah, beating Covenant Christian. But again, Rochester beat Delphi at Delphi last year during the regular season. I mean, the, just to give you an idea of how good the Zebras were last mm -hmm. year. I mean, the, I mean, talk about, you know, just a mutual, I think, respect between these programs. Casper uh, walked his first time up and then was eventually caught stealing. Want to know? Again, the Zebras had a runner picked off in the first inning, caught stealing in the second, and they got a triple play in the bottom of the fourth, so they basically made four outs on the bases. 
if you, if you want to call the triple play, making two outs on the bases. They appealed down to first, and he said strike, so it is not 2-0. and oh, It's 1-1. One and one. Outside, 2-1. Fly ball, shallow right center. And making the catch out in right field is Yount. That, that was, was a good play there by yeah. Yount. I mean, he came uh, quite a ways over from right. That was, that was a tougher play than the play he made the error on earlier, so mm -hmm. good for him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring up Brady Coleman. Brady has flown out to center and reached on an error. And he came around to score on two wild pitches and a ground out. I mean, that was... The Oracle is just handing Rochester a run. I was at Culver Community earlier today. Shelby Oliveris signed with Manchester University for volleyball. Okay. Got to meet her. Really nice kid. Her cousin is Destin Green, who runs on the cross-country team at Manchester U, so that was one of the appealing things about going to Manchester. Plays out of the Dunes Volleyball Club. Shelby does. Okay. So she's yeah. Been. Get to play with Maddie Smith. Yeah. One and one. Make it one and two. Breaking ball didn't quite land. Where? <laughs> I don't know if Huffman tripped or he was just kind of did a little spin to put some body English on it. Two and two. Ball three. Hey, some alls. Runner at first with one out for Carson Pollock. Pollock is 0 for 2, but he has scored a run. He reached on an error on a drop pop-up in the first inning and came around to score and then had an RBI ground out in the bottom of the third, ground ball to second base. Throw back. Coleman back <laughs> easily. <laughs> Coleman keeping a pretty conservative lead here. Inside. 1 0 to Pollock. Throw back to first, safe. Wandre with the snap throw. <laughs> I guess they call it a back pick when the catcher throws down to first to try to pick off a guy. 2 0. Way inside. There goes the runner. Throw down. Good throw. Safe. Boy, that was a really good throw. <laughs> So Coleman steals. Runner at second with one out, and Pollock's ahead in the count 3-0. and And let's see, do you think about giving Pollock the green light here? Uh, another, another RBI here, and you go 5-1, to one and you really like your chances. Mm -hmm. uh, but you also got Paul, you know, you want, you got Reinerts on deck. Uh, I don't know. I mean, if... I would say if he gets something hittable, let's go. But uh, we'll see what Coach Good says. You know he's not going to chase. He does get the 3-0 green line and fouls it off.
Ground ball to third. Hickson throws to Pickering for the out. Hanging on at second is Coleman. And it'll bring up Tanner Reinerts. And let's see what the plan is here if you're Delphi. First base open. But again, that, that's kind of, you know, Cypher is going to give him Tanner enough protection. And again, I, I I don't know if Delphi is thinking this situation through a lot. Maybe if this were, you know, a regional game or something, maybe they would. But mm -hmm. maybe you think about giving him the intentional walk and taking your chances with Cypher. But ball too. But, I mean, that's kind of. It's kind of how a lineup works. You got a bunch of good hitters. You can't pitch around anybody. And then good hitters get good pitches to hit. Two mm -hmm. and zero. Oh. And I like to see Tanner hit the ball to right center field. That is ripped to deep left field. How about left field? Back to the wall, and that ball is gone. He hit it out. Two run homer for Tanner Reinerts, and Rochester now leads six to one. The home run against CMA, that kind of hung in the air for a while. That one was just a missile. Mm -hmm. Well, and you could see at that at bat, I mean, he was really coiling up. So you knew if he got something that was hittable, he was going to get a hold of it, and he sure did with that one. I mean, that was a no-doubter. And again, Tanner, so, I mean, on top of that, he's a really smart hitter. So third time through, he's he's timed him up. Mm -hmm. And that will be all for Huffman. New pitcher coming in. Pickering, is it Pickering coming in? at number five. Six. Not that these uniforms are easy to read under any circumstances, but when you got the sun glinting down on gold uniforms. Number six, Val. Okay. I'm, I'm just an old complaining man now. No, I'm right with you. He said four for 45. Yeah. Still 7-1 over at Fansler, but the uh, Comets have runners at the corners with two outs in the top of the fifth. So they're threatening, but... Uh, Lady Z is looking to get that uh, final out, see if they can uh, move into the bottom of the fifth over there. That's on RTC4.com if you want to catch out the uh, catch the action from Fansler Field tonight. Kate and Caleb over there doing the production with uh, just open audio from the uh, camera, so no commentary with that one. We will be over at Fansler on Wednesday night, weather permitting, for uh, the Rochester Zebras and uh, the Southwood Knights as they open up TRC play. And then Caden and Caleb will be over here uh, covering the baseball game for us. And then we'll be back here at Bob Copeland on Thursday night for uh, Rochester and Pioneer. Looking forward to that one. Uh, was supposed to be the uh, home opener for Rochester last Thursday. It got rained out, so really want to... Yeah. Braden Erickson has 10 Ks tonight against Winnemac, and they're only in the fifth inning. Yeah. Jackson Hickson is the new pitcher, and his first pitch is way short and wild. It, looked like, it looks like what they've done is Pickering has moved from first base to third base, Hickson from third base to pitcher. Noah Hutzel, number four, has entered the game. I believe he's playing first base. Put him in the number seven spot in the lineup. And uh, did they make a change in the outfield as well? I'm not sure if they did. 
If they did, there's no way I could see it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Not with those numbers. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. But Hutzel, Hutzel's entered the game in inning seven. Count is one and one on Cypher. Jake is 0 for 2. He reached in an air. He had a fly ball to right that was dropped in the first inning and then struck out in the third. Two and one. Again, looking at who are Delphi's innings eaters, it looks like Alm, uh, Almaguer is going to pitch some innings for them. But it looks like the guys who are their main guys are Watts, who's got 16 strikeouts in 11 innings, and Elliott. And Coghill can pitch a little bit too. 2-2. Two -two. Round ball to short. Knocked down by Almaguer. He'll have to take a bite out of it. Looks like it kind of took a bite out of him. Yeah. A little stinger there. and Yeah, that had a lot of top spin on it. Mm-hmm. You know, Ladies Z's were able to get out of that top of the fifth inning, so it's still 7-1 as they move into the bottom of the fifth over at Fansler. Mm -hmm. Speaking of top spin, the Rochester girls tennis team is at Triton tonight. Yeah. And then the open TRC play tomorrow with a home match against Perennial Power Peru. 0 and 1 to Gavin Young. Gavin has a two run double and a walk. He's one for one with two RBIs and a run scored. Outside. Just get one of Gavin's best friends as the catcher on the baseball team at Tippecanoe Valley, Isaac Ramsey. They are 4-H yeah. friends. Yeah. For those of you unaware, Gavin has had about the best 4-H career of just, just about anybody I've ever met. Pitch is high, throw down to second by Wandre, goes into center field. And that is a stolen base. Is that Lutz out there? We'd have, a, we'd have a story if it was Cypher stealing. Yeah, it's definitely not Cypher. Yep, Caleb steals second. Runner at second, two outs. Ball three. Well, that's the thing about... Gavin, and you can almost say the same thing about Zane Young, his older brother. They both can hit the ball hard all over the field. Mm -hmm. Zane became a little more of a slugger as he became like a senior. He really looked for something to pull. But Gavin's a real polished hitter there. Three and two. Got him looking. The ball was dropped by Wandre, but he tags Young to complete the strikeout and retire the side. Strikeout number one for Hickson. But Rochester scores two runs in the inning. One hit, one error, one left. End of five innings. It's Rochester six, Delphi one. And you're watching RTC TV4. Welcome back here, Bob Copeland Field. As we move into the sixth inning, the Zebras lead by five runs after five. Put on another two runs there in the bottom of the fifth. Leads six to one, moving into the top of the sixth. Beautiful night here at Bob Copeland Field. Yeah, this is like mid-May weather. And we're getting into mid-April. Well, we went from February to May in like uh, a little bit over a week, it seems like. And we could go back in any time. It just yeah. Indiana weather, Val. We've been around our whole lives, so we know... You grew up in the region, so you know what crazy weather that oh, yeah. <laughs> can be. It's a final at Caston. Strike called to Pickering. He's now playing third base, followed by Hutzel and Elliott. Strike two called over the outside corner. Caston softball has defeated North White 10 to nothing in five innings. Simpleman, five innings, three hits, no runs, no walks, nine Ks. And she had a hit and two RBIs at the plate. Got him. <laughs> so 
Strikeout number eight for Carson Pollock. Oh, and one the count to Noah Hutzel. He's batting for the first time in this game. Hutzel is a freshman. Swing and a miss. Well, Carson's throwing just as hard or maybe even harder now than he was at the start of the game. I mean, he's he's been on his uh, horse here. Got him swinging. How many strikeouts does he have? Strikeout number nine. Wow. It was interesting he didn't have any strikeouts in the fourth inning or the fifth inning. Yeah. But now just blowing away batters here in the sixth. Baseball update, Caston 8-1 over Triton, bottom of the fourth. They were down 1-0 and then scored seven in the third. Swing and a miss by Keegan Elliott. Well, he's just throwing out a high fastball right past the guys. Yeah, now that's, this is Hartley. Hartley was the flex, and now he's batting for the DH. So this is his spot in the order, so to speak. Elliott was 0-2 while he was in there. Strike call. One and two. Ball. Pete Duvall starting tonight for Cassidy. He's allowed one run over 40. He's got five Ks again with Zyder and Duvall. Cassidy will have a chance in most games. And again, I, if Noah Hurd's their number three, there are a lot of teams in the Hoosier North who would put them in, put Noah in, in either the one spot or the two spot. Mm -hmm. Two and two. Yeah, I was impressed uh, last year when he came up here and, and pitched against yeah. Rochester. I mean, he had a really good game on the mound. It was kind of the same thing. They had to kind of pull him early to save some spots. Just tied him up there, got him swinging for strike at number 10. He strikes out the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left for Delphi in the top of the sixth at the end of five and a half. It's Rochester six and Delphi one, and you're watching – RTC TV4. Back here at Bob Copeland Field, moving into the bottom of the sixth inning. The Zebras hold on to that five-run advantage. Leading off for Rochester is going to be Colton Fervita. He's had a pretty good night here for the uh, Zebras. It will be Fervita, Brandbeck, and Brady back due here in the bottom of the sixth against Hickson. Softball update, Tippecanoe Valley has defeated Culver 16-1 to in five innings. I wanted to give a shout-out, and while we're on the subject of softball, I'd like to give you a shout-out to Argus pitcher Ivy Stackhouse. Pitched a no-hitter the other day against River Forest. Cool, yeah. It was only five innings, but they won 19 to nothing. Yeah. And then they won the second game 15-5 to in six innings, so Lady Dragons putting up some runs on the board so far. They are playing LaVille tonight. I don't have an update on that one yet. Score still 7-1 over at Fansler in the top of the sixth. Uh, two outs for the Eastern Comets. So they, they got seven runs pretty early in that one, and Rochester's been holding them, but they have not been able to put anything on the board on their side. Strike call. One and one. Baseball, Pioneer leads Winnemac eight to five, top of the seventh. Hmm. A little bit of a rally there. Yeah, Winnemac led four to two going into the bottom of the third, but Pioneer has turned around the momentum in that one. Two and one. Swing and a miss. You talk about Braden Erickson's uh, pitching. He's uh, just as good from the plate hitting as well as he is pitching. Yeah, he's two for four so far today. Two and two the count. Ball three. Three and two. Base on balls. Ferv aboard again. First walk by Hickson. Now number two, Drew 
and that is the uh, fourth walk by Delphi pitching in this game. Drew Bowers up, pinch hitting for Brant Beck. Strike. Brant Beck was one for two while he was in the game. Throw back to first, safe. Pioneer Softball ranked number 10 in Class 2A this week and hosting Winnemac. I'm looking for an update on that one. Pioneer, a very good day on Saturday. Beat North Miami uh, and Delphi. Mm -hmm. Ten run rule in both. Pitches a strike, throw down, safe, stolen base for Fervita. That was not a good throw. That was... Uh, Way to the third base side there, yeah. so. Wandre has been a little inconsistent on his throws. Uh, and again, the Zebras, they, they work on their base ring enough where if they get somebody picked off early in the game, they're not going to back down. Hickson steps off and just throws to Coghill. One and two. Just low. Throw back to Almaguer trying to sneak <laughs> behind. Ground ball, Hickson to Hutzel for the out. And that will advance Fervid to the third. So that kind of worked out like a bunt. Yeah, Ferv was almost the third base before they even got the uh, ball fielded there. All right, Brady Beck has grounded to second and he lined into a triple play where he plowed over the first baseman. Still one of the strangest plays I've ever seen. And you got it. He said, I get two points for a takedown, don't I? <laughs> oh, that was, that was, that a was amazing snag. by Wandre. I mean, I don't know how you do that. I mean, Definitely saved a run there. Yeah, That was outstanding. The 1-1 one -one pitch from Hickson. 1-2. and two. That was the first one I've really seen Brady kind of stab at. I mean, he, he kind of reached for that one a little bit. Wild pitch to the backstop. Here comes Fervida, and he will score. Seven to one. But that's another thing that you see in high school baseball. You don't see in other levels of baseball. They throw a wild pitch, and they think, well, you know, and, and we talk about it kind of. You're watching a big league game. They're able to self-correct because they're big leaguers. They've thrown, th they've thrown thousands of pitches, thousands of innings. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a guy dirts one, and then he'll dirt the next one even worse. Mm -hmm. got, got him, but it gets away to the backstop. He's going to make it down there. And he reaches base. Strikeout and a pass ball, I think. Strikeout number two for Hickson. Rochester is a runner at first with one out here in the sixth, and they're already up by six runs. Caleb Lutz will bat. He is uh, 0 
for three in the season. Ladies, these get a run back. They are trailing seven to two with one out in the bottom of the sixth over at Fansler to the Eastern Comets. Comebacker Hickson knocks it down. He'll throw to second. Out to first. Safe. Fielder's choice, one six. Two down in the inning. And that will bring up Brady Coleman. He has flown out to center, reached in an air, and walked. 0 for 2. But he has scored twice. Swing and a miss. Zebra's looking for win number six on the year. And looking for their third win in a row. He's got a little rally going and have added another run, seven to four or seven to three now with one out in the bottom of the sixth. Well, let's see. There's a 22 percent chance that somebody named Aubrey had something to do with it. <laughs> Strike. One and two. Put in play to short. Almaguer plays to first. Not Safe. In, not in time. Well, two outs in the inning, so Lutz is moving on contact. So you're probably not getting. So Almaguer probably knew he, he wasn't going to force out. So he had to throw to first and. Brady Coleman showing off the wheels there. I mean, he's he's baseball smart, but he's a good athlete too. And that's so big because now you get one of your sluggers a chance to bat now with two outs and two men on base. Yeah. Pollock has reached in an error, grounded to second, and grounded to third. 0 for 3, but he has scored a run. Strike. Got the Bash brothers coming up here, Pollock and then Reinert's uh, going to be following him up if he can get up here, so... Good opportunity for the Zebras to add some runs. Well, just saying, Steve. If Paula gets on base, and if Reinerts, we could be over in six Maybe innings one, tonight. One swing there by Reinerts, yeah, could do it. Knocked down by Wandre, but the runners are going to advance. Wild pitch. And you can't uh, you can't throw around Pollock because obviously with Reiner's coming up, so you you should you get something juicy to hit here on three and one. Yeah. Good pitch by Hickson. That was outside corner. Yeah, it's a it's a good one to lay off of because I mean he wasn't going to get anything on that if he uh, did swing at it. Grounder foul. The 3 2 offering. Grounder over the head of Hickson. Almaguer throws. Got him. Nice play. But Rochester scores one run in the inning. Um, one hit. No errors and two left. End of six innings, Rochester 7, Delphi 1, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome back here, Bob Copeland Field. The Zebras trying to put a bow on their sixth win of the season. If they can get Delphi out three more times here in the seventh without allowing six runs across, this one will be over, and the Zebras will be 6-3 and three on the season. 
moving into conference play. So you got to feel good uh, if you can do the get this win, three wins in a row going into conference play on Wednesday, Val. Steve, I think I can break a story now. The new girls basketball coach at Argus is Brian Jennings. No kidding. He replaces his brother, Scott Jennings. Huh. And of course, Brian, as many of you know, was the girls basketball coach here at Rochester for four years. I'll be darned. That's not where I thought they were going to go. So uh, Brian Jennings getting back into uh, coaching at his alma mater. So yep. He went 54-39 and 39 in four years at Rochester, won a conference title, won two sectional titles back-to-back -back in 2020 and 2021. Should be good for the kids. They won't have to learn a new name. They can yeah. just keep saying Coach Jennings. Yep. Of course, Argus saying goodbye to Samantha Redinger, but three starters will be back next year. Hmm. With uh, um, Barkus, Bolenbacher, and Lead. So we have Watts, Huffman, and Coghill are due, but that is not Watts in the batter's box. That is Jones. Walker Jones. He's a junior. He is pinch hitting for Watts. Jones is uh, 0 for 1 on the season, but he says he's scored five runs, so I assume he's been used mostly as a pinch runner or a courtesy runner. And that is not Pollock pitching. That's Young, isn't it? Right? Yeah, that's Gavin. And that is not Coleman at shortstop. That's Coleman at second base and Pollock at shortstop. So... Count now one and one. Great outing by Pollock. Would he end up with nine strikeouts? Ten. Ten strikeouts. Two and one the count. Hit by a pitch. You didn't want to do that. Again, with a six-run lead, you didn't want to hit the number nine batter. Now the lineup turns over, and Huffman, who homered back in the first for Delphi's only run, will get the bat. Inside for ball. Line drive to right, caught. Is that, is that Brand Beck out there, or is that Bowers, or is that somebody else? I think that's Bowers. Okay. Coghill, the batter. Strike. If there was a key moment in the game, it might have been the top of the third inning. Coghill let off with a walk, and Almaguer singled him to second. So first and second, nobody out. Zebras were ahead at the time, but it was only two to one. So Delphi is probably thinking, we can, we got a rally going. We got our four, five, six coming. We got two men on base, nobody out. And then Pollock struck out Hickson, got Wandre on that fly ball to left field with a great – Great catch by Ferv, mm -hmm. and then he struck out Pickering. And what they thought was it could be a potentially big inning, they got nothing. Yeah, that catch by Ferv was uh, was a massive play. Ground to right side. This could be two, four, six, three, a double play. Game over, and the Zebras win. The Zebras win. Gavin Young, again, getting the hang of this relief thing. You can get a little margin to work with, but no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. In the top of the seventh and the final score, Rochester 7 and Delphi 1.
real solid win for the Zebras. This is a good Delphi team, and we're going to look up at the end of the year, and Delphi is going to have somewhere around 20 wins again. Mm -hmm. And this will – people will notice this one.